Delaware Indians came suddenly to our house. I remember that they killed and scalped the man near the door, taking the scalp with them. They then pushed the boy through the door. He came to me and we both went and hid under the staircase. They went upstairs and rifled the house, though I can't remember what they took except some loaf sugar and some bundles. I remember that they took me and the boy on their backs through the bushes. I believe the rest of the family had fled except my mother. They carried us a long way, as it seemed to me, to a cave where they had left their blankets and traveling things. It was over the mountain and a long way down the other side. Here they stopped while it was yet light, and there we stayed all night. I can remember nothing about that night except that I was very tired and lay down on the ground and cried till I was asleep. The next day we set out and traveled many days in the woods before we came to a village of Indians. When we stopped at night, the Indians would, would cut down a few boughs of hemlock on which to sleep and then make up a great fire of logs at their feet which lasted all night. When they cooked anything, they stuck a stick in it and held it to the fire as long as they chose. They drank at the brooks in spring, and for me, they made a little cup of white birch bark out of which to, I drank. I can only remember that they stayed several days at this first village, but where it was, I have no recollection. After they had been here some days, very early one morning, two of the same Indians took a horse and placed the boy and me upon it and again set out on their journey. One went before on foot and the other behind driving the horse. 
In this way, we traveled a long way till we came to a village where the Indians belonged. I now found that one of them was a Delaware chief by the name of Tuck Horse. This was a great Delaware name, but I do not know its meaning. We were kept here some days when they came and took the boy away, and I never saw him again, and I do not know what became of him. Early one morning, this Tuck Horse came and took me and dressed my hair in the Indian way and then painted my face and skin. He then dressed me in beautiful warm palm beans, and he made me look, as I thought, very fine. I was much pleased with the beautiful wampum. We lived on a hill, and I remember he took me by the hand and led me down to the riverside to a house where lived an old man and woman. They had once several children, but now they were all gone, either killed in battle or having died very young. When the Indians thus lose all their children, they often adopt some new child as their own and treat it with all respects like their own. This is the reason why they often so carry away the children of white people. I was brought to these old people to have them adopt me if they would. They seemed unwilling at first, but after Tuck Horse had talked to them a while, they agreed to it, and this was my home. They gave me the name of We Let a Wash, which was the name of their youngest child whom they had lately buried. It had now gone to be the fall of the year 1779, for chestnuts had come. The Indians were very numerous here, and here we remained all the following winter. The Indians were in the service of the British and were furnished by, furnished by them with provisions. They seemed to be gathered remnants of several nations of Indians. I remember that there was a fort here. In the spring, I went with the parents who had adopted me to Sandusky, where we spent the next summer. But in the fall, we returned again to the fort, the place where I was made an Indian child. And here we spent the second winter, 1780. In the next spring, we went down to a large river, which is Detroit River, where we stopped and built a great number of bark canoes. I might have st said before that there was a war between the British and the Americans, and that the American army had driven the Indians around the fort where I was adopted. In their fights, I remembered the Indians used to take and bring home scalps, but I did not know how many. When our canoes were all done, we went up to up Detroit River, where we remained about three years. I think peace had now been made between the British and Americans, and so we lived by hunting, fishing, and raising corn. The reason that why we stayed here so long that we heard that the Americans had destroyed all our villages and cornfields. After these many of my family, another Delaware family moved to Kiki, Kiki Ongo, now Fort Wayne. I don't know where the other Indians went. This was now our home, and I suppose we lived here as 26 or 30 years. I was there long after I was full grown, and I was there at the time of Harmar's defeat. At the time this battle was fought, the women and children were all made to run north. I cannot remember whether Indians took any prisoners or brought them any scalps at this time. After the battle, they all scattered to their various homes, as was their custom, till gathered again for some particular object. I then returned again to Kiki Conga. The Indians who returned from this battle were Delawares, Potawatomi, Shawnees, and Miami.